Welcome to the round 14 review. Carlton GWS. Blues go down by 36 points. Coming to you from Sydney Olympic Park. Literally look, looking at the stadium right now. Um, staying right across the road from it. What a disaster that was. Um, this was the third time I tried to come to Sydney. Last year, booked the flights for the Sydney S game at the SCG. Got cancelled due to COVID. This year, earlier in the year, booked flights to Sydney for the SCG game. Um, flight got cancelled. Um, I didn't. I just wanted to keep trying until I came. I haven't been to an interstate trip since, I think, 2014. We played Port Adelaide and lost by 90-something points. So, yeah, it was good. It was exciting. Um, really exciting. You, know, you get on the plane. You, know, you got that freedom. I miss flying. I haven't flown... In, in, in a few years now. So to have that freedom and that excitement of, you know, you're on that mission to go watch the boys play. Um, it's such a G up. And then, you know, get here. I was actually staying at the same hotel as them. I didn't realize. And uh, bumped into a few of them, saw Doc, all business, all class. Um, and then, uh, you know, get to the game and get to the game an hour early, sit there, soak it up. Um, beautiful ground, um, bit of a dead dead stadium, you know, dead fans, fake fans, not real. I was given the banter beforehand. It's just, you know, and they start playing and, and, you know, every week, obviously, you hope. I mean, I was thinking that, you know, Harry signed a bit of a, an energy booster for the group, hopefully. We've obviously had the mid-season review announced, so everyone's on notice. You know, we've had a buy, an extra week off, more time to think and reflect. I had to listen to Fisher and, and Gibbons do their podcast and then they were talking about, you know, we had the hard conversations and I'm thinking, all right, well, we're going to show something. We, 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 we could even lose. We probably, you know, we might lose, but, you know, I know we're going to put, put some fight in tonight. And, and to be honest with you, I thought the first 90 seconds was pretty good. And, you know, generally there's this notion of, oh, you know how Carlton are going to play from the first few minutes. You know, if we're hunting the ball carrier, if we're tackling hard. And I thought we were. We we forced, what was it, three or four ball-ups in a row from this, the first the first bounce. And I thought, all right, well, we are engaged here. We are engaged. And then I think it was Josh Kelly that got that first clearance and burst out of stoppage. Goal. Parksy just out of position. And they get the second, and they get the third. And they've kicked three in a row. We haven't even entered inside 50 yet. And then uh, I think after the second goal in my head, the PTSD started creeping in, but I was like, no, no, no way. There's no way. There's no way that this is what it's going to mean. <sighs> but it did. But it did. I feel like we, I say this every week about a passage of play or a half or a, or, or a game. Like that first half was the worst I've seen this group apply themselves all, maybe in my life, but all season this year. And we've had that Collingwood performance. So it's, it's, it's just like a, it's, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. Um, I'm really big on body language and first quarter, I see Cripps with his hands on his knees. Um, you read the rhetoric around a lot of the, the trainers, like Tim Grover is one of them as well. And he talks about, you, like, don't put your hands on your knees, never slouch over, you show weakness. You know, some of this battle is mental. And, you know, a lot of the boys, hands on knees, body language, not active, you know. Harry, I love him. And I was really keen to see how he would play defensively after signing this big contract. You know, you always wonder, there's a notion in world sport, you know, everyone works for that big contract, it's desperate. And then you get the big contract and you're just not as desperate. Now, Harry kicked a few goals, did some good things. But his, his lack of willingness to want to lead up, create space, run with urgency, sprint with urgency when we didn't have the ball, even when we did have the ball, you know, it was just alarming. And he had his hand on his defender and pointing to the air to tell him to put it on his head. And I, I, I need someone to explain to me, is that an instruction from the coaches? Just put it on top of Harry's head? Or are we wanting Harry to lead at the football and take the mark on the lead? Because I would think that's what we're wanting to do. Um, little things like that. 
Saad, Williams, even Weedering, hands on knees at any stage that they could. And it's, there was just a dejectedness about them and... and um, Half time came along and and I was seething. I was sitting with Jed and Harrison. We had a little crew, um, you know, Carlton supporters, and we were all seething, absolutely seething. Twelve players, twelve players didn't lay a tackle in the first half. <sighs> what am I saying? Like, what am I saying there? I'm what? What did I just say? Twelve players didn't lay a tackle in the first half. That's, that's, that. so angry at halftime. I was thinking to myself, like, this can't happen. There was a, the moment in the third quarter, I was sitting right bang on the wing and the ball came towards us uh, and the ball up. And I actually, I, I don't usually, like, it was such, it's such an interesting ground that like, it's very quiet. Like it's a, it's a ghost town. It's a graveyard and they could hear everything. I'm sure. And I, I screamed out at one point, like, do you folks even care? Like there was a bit of a spark in the third. I wasn't sure if that was the giants, which they have. I actually said this in my preview as well. They, they let teams in. They don't put the foot down. Um, they did it last week to North had that patch where they let teams in. And I didn't know if it was us lifting or if it was them letting us in. Let, let's give us credit. How about that? All right, it was us. We lifted. Let, no worries. Made a game of it. And it's <laughs> so interesting because all, all of the anger in that first half became forgotten about. And that's what I don't know if these players realize how quickly the fans will love them, over love them if they just start playing well. We kicked four in a row in, what was it, 10 minutes or something. Place was rocking. The place was rocking. Um, you know, and there was the, the key moment. I think Harry misses, I think it might've been in the fourth. Harry misses the goal. He just shanks it. They go down the other end. I think it was Toby Green that kicked the goal. And then you just knew two goal swing. And, and then they rolled over. They actually fucking rolled over and just gave up. It, 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 it just seems like Every week, teams are able to pinpoint that kick in the corridor when we're setting up defensively. There's always a hole. There's always a guy on the lead that gets a mark uncontested around the ground. And then the question from me and, and the fans is, is it coaching? Is it effort? Is it... You know, and um, I was walking out and... That was my breaking point last night, for sure. Absolutely. That was that was um, when Bolton, when we lost to St. Kilda in 2019, the week before Bolton got the sack, that had the exact same, that right there was the exact same feeling. That was the exact same feeling. It was a broken and emptiness and a, no, no, it's not working. No. Mind you, this has been the case for a while, but like I always take a little longer to, you know, to, to give up, so to speak, but I'm giving up on whoever's in charge of what's going on. The whole thing, not just the players, not just David Teague, not just the assistant coaches, but anybody who's making decisions at the football club, I have no faith. Gone. Absolutely gone. Um, there's no soul in this group. There's no spirit. And the identity of the Carlton Football Club is one of passion. It's a key. It's a key factor in who we are. We're passionate and we play with passion and desire and spirit. And that's not there on the field. It's absolutely not there off the field. And, um, you know, here we are again, you know. We slipped below Collingwood for a moment. And then I think we're above them by 1.1% or 0.2%, whatever it is. It is, this has become an absolute disaster of a season. There is no way to, to go about it. It has become a disaster of a season. And we should have seen it coming at the end of 2020, but we allowed the club to tell us that it was a COVID affected year. We should have seen it coming because the second, the, the last six or seven games of 2020 were exactly what we're seeing now. And we should have fucking seen it coming, but we didn't, we believed the club. Sorry, I believed the club. I don't wanna talk on anyone's behalf. I believed the club. You know, uh, you know, we played four games in X amount of days, blah, blah, blah. They're not fit. They don't care. They don't care enough. 
They care, but they don't care enough. Individually, they care about themselves. They don't care about their, they don't care about, there is an absolute divide between fan and club. It's, it's, it's actually ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous. I, I had a moment, I, I snapped, I absolutely snapped last night as I'm walking out. They were walking down the race and I was like exiting <clears throat> from that gate. And um, I just, something just came over me. Like I, I, I felt a, it would have been a disservice for me to not have gone and said something. Um, it, was, it was at the players, but it's really at the club. It's really at the club. That's what it is. I, I, I screamed out, it's not good enough three times. And then I said it was garbage, which it was. And I'd challenge anybody who tells me that it wasn't garbage. I would love to have a, a, um, a proper discussion about anyone who tells me that that was not garbage last night and that this season and this rebuild isn't garbage. And, um, and, I, had, and I saw the nerve of one of them look at me, give me this fucking smirk and shake his head. Whether he was shaking his head at me or their performance, don't know. But said everything, said everything to me. They don't care. They don't care. We're just fucking idiots to them. We're just plebs. I know that's the language they use in, on the inside. I know that. I know that's the mentality. That's how they treat the fans. We're, we're nothing but a, we're nothing but a, 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 a paying pawn in the game. They know we're going to show up. I'll be there next week playing at Adelaide, playing Adelaide at Marvel. You know I'll be there next week. They know we'll all be there supporting next week. They know it and they play on it. It's just, it's just sickening. It's, it's actually sickening what this has become. And like, we, we, we cannot stop supporting them because maybe that's what they need, but maybe that's actually what they need. I don't know, but really, really broken. Just so, so fucking broken last night, man. Like, fuck. Why is it that the fans care more? Like, why? Like, you get, I get the feeling that if you had a conversation with people on the inside, they would say, oh, you know, it's just a game. You relax. That's the point. You know, it's, it's not. When you, when you act like something is just a game, you perform like something is just a game. You know? What they could do for like what they're doing for themselves now, they're earning, you know, good money, opportunities, networking, business, all of that, playing the way they play now, they're gonna they're gonna get rewards for it. They could actually get so much more from their lives, from their you know, from their livelihood, more opportunities, you know, they they'll they'll build a fucking community and a legacy that'll you know out, outlive them. You know, when they die, they'll have, you know, the, the legacy will outlive them. And does that even mean anything to anyone there at the club? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Fan cams were something else last night. People don't even like, people don't even like scream and shout much anymore. It's like, it's, it's, it's actually quite soothing to see how you guys who come on, how you articulate yourselves. It's really cool. And, um, yeah, I want to I want to acknowledge you guys that came on last night and and provided that and I almost almost wonder like what did we do before fan camps? You know, like what did we do? What did we do when they were performing badly? Where did we go? How did we deal with it? So Don't even know what to say. I don't even I don't even know what to say anymore. I'm going to leave it there. Um, I haven't got the player packet with me. I didn't bring it with me, but the player of the game, I thought it was Matt Kennedy, which says a whole lot, doesn't it? The guy on the rookie list, playing for his life, really got an opportunity because Setterfield was injured. And he played like a guy that, you know, had the fear of his career on the line. And unfortunately, there aren't too many of them that do it. You know, our leaders were, I mean, Cripps was okay. He was okay. Doherty, I th something must be wrong. Something, something must be. It, it, something has to be wrong. The fumbles. The the. Oh, mate, let's have a look. Let's have a look at some of these names that really hurt me. Zach Williams, eleven touches and one tackle. I'm 
I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to go through names. I'll do it in the player ratings. I'm going to give it a day or two before I do player ratings and and go from there. But um, listen, talk to me. How are you guys feeling? How are you going? Um, uh, is it just emptiness? And, and does anybody have like a solution? Does anybody have like, what do we do between now and next week? Because in, like, I, I really fear for all of us and what we have to sit through for nine weeks. You know, and we can't afford to stop caring. We, I don't know if we can afford to do that because then then we're an absolute dead dead club and you know there's a notion of like last year was interesting because it was a COVID affected year we all put our hands in our pockets and paid our memberships knowing we weren't going to be able to go to save the club the, the, you know this year and we, we felt that connectedness but this year th- there isn't that so how are people going to like people it's now getting to the point where it's like financially people are struggling and whatever the case may be it's like what why would I when when they don't care you know anyway um let me know what you think in the comments. We'll have a chat about it there and we have to stick together. That's the main thing. Um, I do love the club. I do love the boy. I love, I fucking love my boys and I'm passionate like this because I love them. But it's, it's, I say it every week. It's not about being nice anymore. There needs to be some harsh fucking realities and some harsh actions. Like, come on, fix it. The board. If you, ha- if you do not have 100% commitment to the club first, if the club is your second side hustle, you've got to step down. It, 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 it's beyond a joke. We can't afford to have people who are not 100% invested in the club on field there because it, we, this can't go on any longer. It can't, it can't, it can't. This is the Carlton Football Club, you know? We're so far back from what we were, not just from a premiership, but just from a culture. And I don't want to hear anyone say, yeah, but you know, John Elliott's salary cap. Yes, we that was wrong, but it came out of the mentality of winning, you know? So I want answers. I want them to I want them I want I want board members to speak this week. I want answers. That's what I want. I don't want to hear about we're in the process of a mid season review and we have to wait until the, the review's done. I want answers from the board because they've made decisions year in, year out, sacking Ratten, hiring Mick. Sacking Mick, hiring Bolton, sacking Bolton, hiring Teague. These are poor decisions. Recruits that are overpaid, overpaying anyone, anyone really that comes to this club, we pay overs. And the fans have got this notion of, oh, you have to pay overs to get these players into the club. Fuck, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, you do not. And if you're going to pay overs, you've got to pay overs to the right people. And we haven't done that yet. Anyway, have a good one. It's going to be a tough week, but we'll be fine. We'll fight to live another day. Go the Mighty Blues.